Hello, my name is Sherry Russo. I'm the Community Engagement Manager at WOUB Public Media. And I'm Deborah Brewer, Educational Services Manager here at WOUB. Welcome to WOUB's Our Ohio program. Our Ohio is a high school documentary film project that WOUB worked on in partnership with American Documentary POV with funding support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. We also received funding support from the Ohio Arts Council, the Foundation for Appalachian Ohio Strengthening Civics Education in Appalachian Ohio Grant, and the Ohio University Scripps College of Communication through the AT&T Aspire Grant. Students in five area high schools, Logan, Wellston, Alexander, South Gallia, and Meigs, worked to produce independent short documentary style films that told their own personal and cultural story. Through the course of this year, the students in the schools learned about the art of documentary filmmaking through watching POV documentary films and talking with their creators and getting instruction and support from WAV employees. The students watched a POV documentary film called Portraits and Dreams. The film was about a teacher in Appalachian, Kentucky, teaching elementary students how to tell their story using photography. And it helped students to think about Appalachian stigma and cultural pride and the role media plays in telling your own story. They also watched a POV film called When I Write It. The short film was made by high school students and it's a simply a day in the life of a couple of friends living in Oakland, California. In discussing this film, our young filmmakers began to recognize the power of their own stories and we saw some of this reflected in the films that we received. After they watched the films, leaders from their communities came into the classroom via Zoom and talked about how the community has helped shape them into who they are today. The students then worked with WOUB staff to identify the story they wanted to tell and learn the ins and outs of documentary filmmaking. Deborah, tell us more about this classroom instruction piece of this project. So we had the help of some of the graduate students from the Scripps College of Communication who taught us, uh, taught lessons by, uh, on storytelling and um, ethics and addressing stereotypes. They also provided some technical lessons on audio and visual effects and interviewing. Also, our education department here at, at OU, WAB was uh, able to loan some equipment out to the schools that might not have access to those things. Wow, those students then created and submitted their own short films, which were judged as part of WAB's Our Ohio High School Documentary Film Festival. During this program, we'll show you some of the winning films and hear from those winners. There were three categories, best technical production, best regional feature, and best overall. But before we show some of the films, Deborah, what were some of your takeaways from the films that we received? So I was really impressed by all the films we received. Um, this, for some of the kids, this was their very first time of doing something like this, but they were really able to tell their own story in a very genuine way which is what we were looking for, like an insight into their life and their community. Wow, that's awesome. So what were some of those themes that we came across in these films? So we saw a lot about friendships, like these are my friends and here's why. Um, we also had some stories about uh, sports and mm -hmm. things in their community, and we know in our community sports are really a community event, so a lot of kids that were active in sports. Um, and then we had some about hobbies, we had dirt bikes, <laughs> blacksmithing and hunting and I learned a lot about those things. Yeah, me too. I never <laughs> I didn't know about that stuff. So it's awesome. Let's take a look at some of those. Friends are something all humans need to survive. Though some of us prefer our internet friends. Last 3 years at Bold, I found people that made me smile, could brighten me up on my darkest days. And Their family is my family, and after soccer, I clearly did not have enough of these people. My favorite by far was soccer, which I have accomplished second team all district, academic awards in soccer, going to the final four and division two, and playing in the senior all-star game. We also saw some films that touched on deeper issues like poverty, stereotypes, and mental health. Here are a few clips from our third place overall winner, Mariah Clark from Alexander High School, that gives us an insight into some of these issues. Lazy, stupid, ignorant, Trump-loving, bigoted, backwood mountain people. These are all things people associate with Appalachia without understanding the effect they have on us. As me and my mom flipped through my old childhood photos, I felt the weight of those stereotypes again. 
older I got, the greater my need to feel like I belonged became. And at some point, that need outgrew my shame. I found that my German ancestors moved to what is now Columbia Township in the 1740s and simply never left. We have lived here for more than four generations, and for the first time in my life, I was filled with pride that I was from here. But I ask you to look inside yourself and to examine the ideas about this place and about these people that you hold. To take a step back and really learn about us. This place is rich in culture, history, and stories. Now on to the film festival winners. The first place winner in our best technical production category was Sullivan Potter from Wellston High School. Sullivan's film examined the importance of family and the special relationship he has had with his sister growing up through their shared love of music. The judges thought Sullivan's use of camera angles silhouetted against the sunset was a great visual effect. The judges also commented on the writing, saying that the entire piece felt like it was a poem. We recently had the opportunity to chat with Sullivan and his teacher, Samantha Beatty, via Zoom about how he developed the film and why the topic was so important to him. First person I thought of as far as who has had the most impact on me and the greatest development is my sister. So as soon as Miss Beatty actually prompted us with the WOUV project, I immediately thought of my sister. Honestly, I, I really just turned them loose and let them be creative. I tried to be a sounding board for them to bounce ideas off of. We have a very open classroom culture, so we, we um, thrive on discussion a lot. And we did have discussions about what they were going to be doing for their videos. And I think having the community leaders um, talk to them and talk about what the community means to them and how it shaped them really helped to kind of get their creative juices flowing and help them think of some things that they wanted to have in their videos. It definitely allowed me to look back on a lot of years of my life, especially growing up with my sister Grace. And I think that throughout this project, because it took a lot of work from the two of us, we actually grew even closer through it. Um, it was incredible to sit down with my sister Grace and say, I want to record a song together. Um, I want to film you. The, those were really key moments for the two of us. And it really sparked something that we can now share in our success. So I'm very grateful for that impact it's had on me. Like in Sullivan's film, music, family, community, and connection were also important themes throughout the first place winner of the best regional feature category. Chris Miles of Meg's High School created a film called Appalachian Connections. The judges thought Chris's use of music as a language was very thoughtful and really liked the concept of looking at the impact of music through the generations. Let's take a look. Sometimes I wonder, is there a language anybody will understand, regardless of who you are, where you're from, or even age? When I'm thinking about this, it's usually not long before I bury my face into my palm because the answer is right in front of me. It's been in front of me my entire life. That language is music. I've never had trouble connecting with anybody when it comes to music. A love for music is as universal as things like drinking water or even breathing. I mean, think about it, like seriously think about it. Name one person you know that doesn't enjoy some kind of music. I guarantee you can't. It goes without saying that music is a part of my everyday life. I pretty much have music playing no matter what I'm doing, be it traveling, working, or even things I do in my free time like art or gaming. The only time I don't have music playing in some way is when I'm at school, which, I mean, coincidentally, is typically the most boring part of my day. Music in my everyday life isn't just limited to what I'm playing. It seems that everywhere I turn, there's some place dedicated to the arts. Places like Court Street Bar and Grill that constantly has live musicians. Wolf Mountain Entertainment with musicals starring locals around town. And the more recent Blakesley Center, which hosts all sorts of events like concerts, and even like comedy nights. There's also more seasonal events, like the Farmer's Market, which has a new local singer each week. And of course, the Big Ben Blues Bash in the summer 
an annual multi-day festival celebrating live local music here in Ohio. However, when talking about music in Meigs County, it'd be a crime to not mention the Meigs Marauder Marching Band. They're an absolute local legend, and to me, a symbol that it doesn't matter where you're from, but your pride in yourself and others that'll make you succeed. It's wild to me that a high school band from a small town in Ohio has played somewhere like Washington, D.C. more than once, and it makes me so proud to be part of such a prestigious group. The students and staff involved in the marching band have amplified my passion for music tenfold over the years, and I'll never forget my time being a part of it. Family members are usually one of the top influences on a child's life, and I was no exception. My mom was one of my largest influences when it comes to music, and especially in joining marching band. If there was ever a time where she wasn't playing or listening to songs, she was talking to me about them, or talking about her time in bands. But just like she directly influenced my love for music, my grandfather influenced her. He's been involved in the music industry for 44 years, working mostly as a radio host for a few different stations, and was also in his high school marching band and some local bands with his friends. My grandpa told me the story about my mom growing up, where he would have to bring her to his radio station often, and she'd play with older records and listen to whatever she'd get her hands on. She still listens to some of these records today, and she showed me them, and I love them, and I love that three generations can be linked through something as simple as a single vinyl record. Perhaps an as big, if not bigger influence on me than my family are my friends. I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am today without them. Their passion and love for one another and music inspires me every single day to better myself and have more fun with performing. I'm also making friends through music, especially with people you'd never think possible. Take Halo, for example, who lives here in Meg's, but she's homeschooled, and I would have never met or talked to her if I didn't know we shared a mutual interest in a few bands. Or even Colin, someone I met online. He lives all the way in California, but we bonded quickly once we realized we both have such a passion for marching band. And it's not like they're the only people I made friends to music either. Most of my friendships and relationships have formed or been strengthened by things like band or even being in the middle school choir. To be honest, off the top of my head, I can only think of one person I'm close with that's never even played an instrument. Every other person I have some sort of bond with has or still does. As powerful of a bridge that music is, I don't think I would have ever have learned to connect with people the way I do if I didn't live here in Appalachia. It's the norm to treat everyone as family, to help strangers on the side of the road, and to just be kind to one another in a way that you don't get anywhere else. It's so cliche, but it's a place where anybody will help you get your car out of a ditch, and I know that from experience. A few years ago, I would have never expected to have such a strong love for where I live. But with the one-of-a-kind people and places here, how couldn't you? To me, Appalachia redefines what it means to connect with others, and I'll never forget it. Still love, still love doing it. Still fun. It's crazy. When it stops being fun, I'll stop doing it. Uh, it's still, it's still a blast. Such a great job, Chris. Now moving on to the best overall category. Jenna Folden from Alexander High School received second place honors with her film called The Next Chapter. In the film, Jenna takes an honest look at the impact of the pandemic and the uncertainty, panic, and anxiety that comes along with high school graduations. The judges liked the shot composition for her film and commented that she did a great job of helping viewers to identify with her feelings of uncertainty about the future. They also added that she's a great storyteller. Now let's watch Jenna's film. Have you ever been looking for something to watch and you end up spending an hour scrolling around? There are just too many choices. Should I binge watch Bridgerton or maybe rewatch the Twilight series? Hashtag Team Edward. I could watch a cheesy 90s rom-com. <laughs> and there is always Hamilton for the 360th time. That's kind of what it feels like to think about what happens after high school. There's so many choices and decisions that you have to make. It's not the exact same thing, really, because these choices are more permanent, aren't they? 
You can't just restart or pick something else 20 minutes in like you can with a bad movie. It all feels so uncertain and the uncertainty is terrifying. Always present, forever looming in the back of your mind, hiding in the shadowy, scary, dark corners that we forget to dust out. But I have no idea. I'm not even there yet. This is just the start of my journey. My whole high school career, there were always older people and they looked older too. They were tall and they seemed all grown up, but most of the seniors in my class, myself included, do not look like the seniors we had. I think that helped me convince myself that we weren't actually seniors. Another factor could be that I was completely online half my sophomore year and my entire junior year. And the whole experience felt like a fever dream. So I try to actively block it from my mind. But as much as that thought makes me contemplate my continued existence, we are in fact seniors. And it really kicked in for me at the end of season party for marching band. I've been in marching band since my freshman year. I've seen seniors come and go. And sure, the end of season party, it's always sad because it means the end of something that I really love. But it was different this year because I realized that it was the last time I was ever going to do that. The last time I was ever going to be in that environment with those people that I've grown to love and to care about and to think of like family. Um, it didn't seem like a big deal until it was our faces on the cake and we were the ones opening the senior gifts and saying goodbye. It sunk in and it felt like I'd been hit by a train, but if the train was anxiety and panic, I realized that I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. This, this is the best way I can describe it. It's like trying, adulthood is like trying to assemble a couch from Ikea in under an hour with no instructions and half the screws are missing. But one day as I was panicking, my mom said something to me that after a while made me feel better. She said, Jenna, honey, you're acting like you have to go to college and you have to know exactly what you're doing for the next 10 years. You don't have to live by a set of bullet point measurements for success. You just don't. Do you think you're the only senior to ever feel unprepared? I guarantee you, you're not. Nobody feels ready for their whole life to change. Every single person on this planet is different. No one's going to take the same path and everyone is gonna end up with their own ending. Everyone has a different definition of success. Everyone has a different way to reach it and in their own time. You don't have to have everything figured out right now. You can make mistakes, change your mind. Life isn't linear. Wow. So this is normal? I thought everyone else had their crap together and knew what they were gonna do and that I was the only clown in the circus. Now that I know I don't have to have everything figured out, it's a little easier to breathe. I can focus more on my short-term goals, like not failing three months from graduation. College is probably what's gonna happen. I think that's my path, but who knows yet. I also wanna hike the Appalachian Trail, travel the country, I could join the military. There's so many options. Now the trouble is just deciding which one to start with. There's no imminent rush, so I'll focus on the present. I'll work on my gold award project for Girl Scouts and volunteering for 4-H. I'll do things that make me happy now and I'll hang on to this freedom. Hi. I'll let it be
Bye. And now, drum roll, please. It's time for the best overall first place winner. The winner was Hadley Fain from Wellston High School, who submitted a film called The Art of Finding Yourself. Hadley's film stood out because it looks at the struggles and successes of being a young artist in a small town and the personal choices she had to make to be true to herself. The judges for Hadley's film were impressed by her ability to use her own art, which provided great visuals, and by the story of how her community impacted her progression as an artist. Without any further delay, let's watch Hadley's film, The Art of Finding Yourself. In a small community in Appalachia is probably not a lot of people's first choice, especially not a lot of artists like myself. In fact, I didn't even take an art class until middle school. Before then, I always knew I was a little different from my peers, I just didn't know in what way. It turns out that I saw the world differently, which turned out to be essential to my artistic ability. I found out that I had a knack for drawing around this time, and it seemed to amaze my family and my teachers. My mom began sharing my drawings on Facebook, and our community became amazed too. I love the fact that I had found something that I was good at, so I kept doing it. It seems like I spent my entire middle school years drawing and getting better. When I got to high school, things became more complicated. Classes started requiring more of my time, I became involved in extracurriculars, and I lost the time to draw. My progress hit a brick wall, and I became increasingly unmotivated, even in art class. However, even during these times where I didn't produce as much work, every time I did, there would be overwhelming support from my community, my peers, and my family. Eventually, into my junior year, I got out of my funk and I started to create again. I was even highly encouraged to consider a career in art. Although living in a small town restricted my exposure to the arts and creative jobs, one thing it didn't restrict was support. If I didn't live in Wellston, I don't know if I would have received that same support that got me through the hard times. Even so, it can be incredibly isolating. No one sees things in the way I do, and I know this sounds corny, but no one truly understands me or the way I think. I've stopped letting it bother me though, because in the past year I've become bothered by a very different part of my talent. Something that I didn't think about until I started applying for art schools. The fear that I'm doing it all for the wrong reasons. That I do art just for attention on social media, that I do it just for my family to be proud of me for something, that I do it just so my small town will admire me. After all, how could I pursue a career and a passion that I'm not truly passionate about? These thoughts came and went, however. I was the only one thinking them. I then came to one of the most important realizations of my life so far. I had not been creating art for myself. My intentions were not malicious, of course. Expanding myself and my skills for other people's approval, especially because I was a child when this started, wasn't evil. I didn't know myself, so it was far easier to create for others anyway. I've always had issues with being vulnerable, but I knew that if I wanted to start making art for myself, I needed to learn how. And so I did. I started making art that made some people uncomfortable. But honestly, I didn't care. It was actually quite liberating. I had always been confined to creating things that were beautiful instead of the things that were real, the things that I experienced and things that I felt. And now I have a whole new understanding of self, and it just so happens that my community gets to witness my transformation as well. As I continue on in life, my art cannot just be beautiful anymore, even though in Wellston that is the general understanding of what art is. But art is so much more than beauty. Art is raw, art is vulnerable, Art is emotional, and art is how I found myself. That one gave me goosebumps the first time I watched it. I agree. Congratulations, Hadley. We had the opportunity to chat with Hadley via Zoom about her film and how the project impacted her. Now, I had a lot of self-doubt after I turned in the actual um, like assignment and, and I, I had that doubt until my mom actually shared it on Facebook and people were coming up to me and being like your film touched me so much like I was in tears watching it 
And I was like, well, maybe I did succeed <laughs> in what I was trying to do in the first place. Awesome. Well, as you mentioned, your film is is so personal. Talk about why you decided to share your journey to being an artist as your as your film for this project. Well, something that I've learned about myself in the past year is that I know nobody better than I know myself. And being an artist is such a big part of my identity. And so it made sense for that to be the focus of my documentary in some way or another. Okay, uh, final question. You know, after doing this project, um, learning about a little bit more about um, the people in your community, and then of course, learning about documentary filmmaking and the power of media, what are you going to carry with you into the future after completing this project? I think the thing that I'm going to carry most about this project is the fact that it pays to be vulnerable and to be completely open in yourself. And it, it shouldn't be something that I fear anymore. And it shouldn't be something that anybody fears. If you just put yourself out there, it can have really positive benefits for yourself or for other people. It could help somebody else. Like you don't know what putting yourself out there can do. Thank you, Hadley, and congratulations to all of our winners and all who participated in this year's project. Coming up next on WOUB is a POV film, Portraits and Dreams, the film that was the foundation of this project and helped the students to learn about how powerful media can be in telling your own story. Thanks for joining us. To learn more about this project and all the educational programming and services offered by WOUB, visit our website, woub.org. If you want to check out these films again, visit bit.ly slash woubrohio.